This episode of Steve's Outdoor Adventures was brought to you by the Adventure Armory. Rifle, scope, and ammo packages for hunters. This week, Steve West joins some of his clients in the Northwest Territories on Victoria Island's frozen tundra. They brave the extremely cold northern weather and temperatures are well below freezing as they search for island muskox. Guided by native Inuit hunters, this is a true Arctic experience they will never forget. This week on Steve's Outdoor Adventures. The Arctic has always been one of my favorite places. It's desolate, remote, and barren. And the animals that live there are tough and spectacular. The Inuit people that live there are warm and hospitable hosts, but they're also world-renowned professional hunters and guides. This week, I'm in the Arctic with some of my longtime clients. The adventure of the hunt begins now. Steve West, in typical fashion, arrived in the community a few days prior to his clients to be sure everything was in order for the upcoming hunt. Upon arrival, he met the Inuit hunters who were to be their guides and spent the next few days learning the community and spending time with the people. After getting to Uluhuktuk or Holman as some call it, I was greeted by the friendly staff and the community members. Now when a TV show comes to a small community in the Arctic, everyone comes out to meet you. Now I was taken on a full tour of the town, made an appearance on their community radio show. This is Steve West, host of the Steve's Outdoor Adventures television and radio series. And was even taken to their golf course. Now I love to play golf, and I had to take the opportunity to play a few holes, even though it was 20 below zero. Yeah. Yes! <laughs> oh! <laughs> You know, everybody always asks me why I shoot when I get where I'm going. It's simply because I don't know how the airlines have handled my gun cases. Mm -hmm. And because of that, I always shoot them when I get where I'm going. Make sure that bullet's gonna hit right where I want it to. Yeah. The clients, arriving a few days later, were greeted at the airport by Steve and the hunters. They settled in for the night, but not before taking in an Inuit drum dance that the community had put on for them, including the dance for good hunting. Muskox were nearly extinct at one time, but after protections and management were implemented, their numbers have bounced back with an estimated population of over 100,000 animals. Now, I've chosen the community of Uluhuktuk on Victoria Island as the destination of choice for Steve's Outdoor Adventures clients who book muskox hunts. The travel here is easy, but it does take some time. My clients fly from their home airport to Edmonton, Alberta, spend the night. The next day they fly to Yellowknife in the Northwest Territories and spend the night again, and then finally fly from Yellowknife to Uluhuktuk where all the hunting begins. Now this was gonna be a much larger hunting group than they were used to, not to mention that we had video equipment and extra staff to film the hunts. And now we're ready to head out onto the land and begin our hunt for muskox. Well, folks, when we return from commercial break, we're going to be headed out onto the ice in search of Umingmuk, the muskox of the north. This segment of Steve's Outdoor Adventures has been sponsored by Pendleton Ammunition, loading bullets one round at a time. The next morning, the guides, their helpers, and all of the hunters assembled one of the largest hunting groups to ever sport hunt on the island, with 14 snowmobiles and Comotec sleds combined. Getting all the sleds ready to go here this morning. The guides are showing up with their Comotex. They get everybody situated in their sleds and head out in what's gonna be probably the largest procession of hunters that probably ever left the home and community. Well, it took most of the day to get out to the cabin. You know, we, we did hunt, we did see some muskox on the way, but we decided to just get out to the cabin, get settled in, and really get after it the next morning. 
The next morning's weather was bright and clear. Perfect hunting conditions. The guides and hunters set out with high hopes of finding muskox. Well, first up was Dan Manor from Wisconsin. And I could tell we needed to get him into the action fast because he was excited all the time. I mean, he was constantly in a positive mood and ready for action, you know. Well, I'm an adventurous person. And about 10 years ago, I thought it'd be really nice to take a trip to the Arctic and just go on a muskox hunt. And we spotted a couple of bulls and moved to within rifle range. And that's when Don got his shot. Well, we saw these bulls coming over the hill. We laid down, we got set up, waited for them to come in. So I put the crosshairs on the front shoulder and let him have it. Well, it's been a long morning. We've been out here on the, the frozen tundra chasing these muskox. We just got out in front of them and uh, let them come right to us. And then once they spotted us, they started working their way up out of the bowl and Don put it on them. These incredibly tough animals. They live in some really harsh environments, but what a trophy, amazing hide. I mean, just a, an amazing animal in general. So it's always a privilege to hunt them. Congratulations. Thank job, you. Don. Great. Thanks, Steve. Yeah. Wallace. Good Great. job, Wallace. I mean, these guys work hard up here. This is some, you know, once again, incredibly harsh land that these guys, you know, live and guide in. And, they're hunting an animal that's just as majestic as any in the world today. It's amazing to think that they don't just live here, but they thrive here uh, on this frozen tundra, eating just a little bit of sparse grass and, and lichen. So, well, it's really cold out here today. We're gonna bring the snow machine up here, get him cut up and loaded. We've gotta get him caped out so Don can have a beautiful trophy back at home. We've got a lot of hunting left to do here in the Northwest Territories of Canada and the frozen tundra of Victoria Island. Now we had our first big bull musk ox down and we were ready to roll on. So we left Don and his guides behind to take care of the animal and the rest of us headed to higher ground to glass for another herd of musk ox. With Don Manor's big bull down, the guides and hunters set out again and in a short period of time, find another big herd of musk ox working their way toward a rocky ridge where Steve West and hunter Matt Hayes are setting up to ambush them. Now, this was a good news, bad news situation. Now, the good news was that we had found a big herd of musk ox and most of them were good bulls. The bad news was that they were way out in the open. So we had to employ a two hunter strategy. Matt Hayes came with me and we worked our way down a rocky ridge staying out of sight. Well, Sean Van Gerpen and his guide worked their way around to the other side. The theory was that if one of us bumped the musk ox, they would run right to the other. It worked perfectly for Matt and what happened next was something that neither one of us will ever forget. Yeah, 
Matt and Steve didn't have long after getting set up. Before they realized the whole herd of muskox was charging right at them. Yep, good. Yep. This segment of Steve's Outdoor Adventures has been sponsored by Bergara Rifles. A passion for precision, every barrel, every rifle. This segment of Steve's Outdoor Adventures has been sponsored by Marathon Seat Covers. We've got you covered. You're watching Steve's Outdoor Adventures, seen exclusively on the Outdoor Channel. This segment of Steve's Outdoor Adventures is brought to you by Steiner and the new Predator Extreme Binoculars. Before going to commercial break, Matt Hayes and Steve West were set up with a herd of muskox, barreling down on them. Yep. Yep. Big bull down, man. Here comes the cavalry. Here come the snow machines and sleds. We're gonna get this big bull wrapped up and taken care of. Guys, thank you. Bob, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I know how to do this. Long, long, <laughs> long. The longest leg black sign. There's a lot of them. We'll go get him next. Do you see how big he is? Stop. Let's see your rifle. Put your hands on that bad boy. Show him the money, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's Thank a nice you, one, nice and long. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, guys. Nice and Well, we spotted a herd of muskox over here in this valley. The guides were fairly confident that with different groups hunting them from different directions that somebody was going to get a shot at them. We came over here and got set up on this part of the valley. The muskox got spooked and ran up, bumped into some other hunters over here, and next thing you know, they were right in our laps. I mean. They were coming closer and closer and closer. I don't know, what were you thinking? I mean, I thought they were gonna hit us. I know? thought they were gonna charge. At one time, Steve had to stand up. I put the wave on, I was like, no, no, no. And that's when they stopped, gave us a really good look. You put it to him. Yeah, he turned broadside and we put it to him. End of story, I mean, look at how beautiful this hide is. It's nice and full, just perfect. You got a silver back to him, it's perfect. Couldn't ask for a better trophy. He's nice and wide, big bosses on top of his head. Just a perfect ending to a great day. Hey, congratulations, hey, thank man. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. But uh, yeah, I, I can hardly wait to kind of get, get back out there and keep hunting again because it sounds like now we finally found the muskox after a slow start to the morning. It seems like there's some in every valley around here and uh, little bunches, eight, 10, 12 here and there. It's just a matter of time for we even probably get into some more before the, before the day's out or before we get back to the cabin. So but we've got to get this animal properly taken care of, cave the meat taken care of and on the sleds and got to head on back out of here. Keep going because there's still a lot of daylight left today and some hunting left to be done. We didn't have much time after Matt shot his muskox because one of the guides had spotted another herd of muskox in the next valley over. He came back to get us. He assured us that there were at least two big bulls in that herd. So with daylight running short, we left Matt and his guides to tend to his trophy and we headed out. Now that Don Menor and Matt Hayes both had trophy bulls down, it was Sean Van Gerpen's turn to make a stock. One herd that we saw was way down in the valley, but we used the wind to our advantage to make a good long stock. Spotted a whole herd of muskox down here in the valley about a half mile away. Yeah, probably more like three quarters of a mile. It's quite a distance up here. We've got the wind in our favor. 
We've got cheering section up on top of the hill. We got a hunter that's got some pent up frustrations. <laughs> This segment of Steve's Outdoor Adventures has been sponsored by Burris Optics. Find what matters. This segment is sponsored by Adventure Armory. Rifle, scope, and ammunition packages shipped, ready to shoot. If you'd like to book your own guided big game hunting adventure, give my office a call. I will personally take your calls, answer your questions, and help you book the hunting or fishing trip of a lifetime. Before going to commercial break, Steve and client Sean Van Gerpen were closing the distance on a herd of muskox. With the wind in their face, Steve, along with Sean and his guide Travis Kaptana, slipped to within 300 yards of the muskox. Steve, Travis, and I were able to sit there and look over the herd. We were able to decide on the one that was second from the right. Everything had been perfect and Sean had concentrated and made the shot count. And we had another awesome bull down. But as we watched the rest of the herd, I realized that the wind was blowing so hard that those muskox were unaware of what had really happened. They milled around and started working their way up the hillside. And I decided to send for another hunter, Jason Hovey, to come up because the next bull was just as big as the one Sean had just shot. After waiting for the muskox to go over the ridge and out of sight, Steve, Jason, and guide Ross move quickly to intercept the herd and sneak into position for a shot. Stop, okay, I'm good. Hold on. Now. Smoked him! Oh, he's beating the air, baby! Woo! That's how you do it! What do you think, man? That's <laughs> awesome, huh? How about that? Yeah! Victoria Island. <laughs> that was awesome. Thanks, Steve. Hey, Tom. That was awesome, Steve. It was an amazing hunt. It goes to show you if you keep the wind in your favor, it doesn't matter if you're hunting musk ox, elk, or mule deer, keep the wind in your favor, work your way in close. Well, in this case, about 300 yards was as close as we could get in this open ground. You can make anything happen. Jason, congratulations. Thank you, Steve. Anytime. Thank you very much. You know, this is just another great hunt out here on the frozen tundra on Victoria Island in the Northwest Territories. Having a blast with our Inuit guides. 
and putting some awesome trophies on the ground. In the end, we had taken four big muskox bulls in one day and captured it all on film, and I still hadn't picked up my gun yet. So you're gonna wanna join us again next week and see the exciting conclusion of this hunt. And remember that if you'd like to book this muskox hunt for yourself or any other big game hunt, please email or give me a call. I'll personally schedule your hunt and help you take care of all the details. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for this week's show. But please remember to join us again next week for another exciting episode of Steve's Outdoor Adventures. Join us next week as the weather turns ugly, the temperatures drop, and a spring storm threatens to end Steve's hunt on Victoria Island in the Northwest Territories. Ha, ha, ha.